Good afternoon. We're back with more Marvel Champions, and today will be a card review of the Next Evolution Expansion player cards, and then there will be gameplay and separate videos, and I'll give my thoughts on the different encounters in those videos. This video will be just for the player cards, and we'll start out with Cable. There are indeed cards in the expansion that were not revealed in the card preview, so we've got some new things to go over. There will be some repetition from things that I have already gone over in the preview. So let's get started. First up is Nathan Summers. Cable is his hero name. The alter ego is Nathan Summers. Recovery 4, hand size 6, hit points 12. You may include player side schemes from any aspect in your deck. So this expansion in introduces a new concept, which is the player side scheme. The side scheme that is included in the player deck the players can play the side schemes paying whatever the cost for them is, typically zero or one. Then when you clear the side scheme, it has a beneficial effect and it typically has no downside, so you don't get any penalty by leaving it on the table. You can complete it at your leisure. Nathan Summers has the Alter Ego ability. It is a setup ability. Search your deck and discard pile for a player side scheme and put it into play. Well, we'll have to take a look at the player side schemes before we can evaluate them. And he has the mutant and soldier traits. Cable has 2-2-2, two, two, and two. that's good stats. And after Cable defeats his side scheme, ready him once per phase. Okay. Hand size 5 hits, hit points 12. So I've given the opinion before that what I'm looking for for an S plus tier hero is the ability to generate resources and or draw cards such that we can have a big turn from time to time. A big turn meaning a turn in which we generate enough resources that we can deal with whatever the boss did that turn on expert difficulty and then also play something that upgrades us for the future. So that would be a turn where you get the chance to generate three or four extra resources, play Avengers Mansion, which stays on the table and generates a card every turn, and then also deal with whatever the boss did in that round. Those big turns are what are going to enable you to build up in stage two so that you can take on stage three. So the cable base ability doesn't appear to give him any resources or card generation at all. So what we're looking that that is what we'll be looking for in his kit. In addition, we're also looking for burst damage or damage that gets around retaliate. Burst damage meaning 10 or more damage from a single card, or damage that's immune to retaliate, and the reason that we're looking for that is because some of the more difficult bosses in the game have the retaliate trait, and if you just do small amounts of damage over time, you take a lot of retaliate damage and will typically die before you can defeat the boss. So, that's what we're looking for for an S or S plus tier hero, and my definition of S or S plus tier is a hero that's capable of taking on all, if not close to all, if not all, of the content in the game. An S plus tier hero will be capable of taking on any scenario in the game on expert difficulty. And an S tier hero will be capable of taking on most of the content in the game on expert difficulty. And for true solo play, there are only, I think, five of those heroes in the game who are S plus. That being said, let's dive in and take a look at Cable's Hero Kit. First up is Body Slide, a zero cost event. Change form, each other player may change to the form you are in. So if you switch to your alter ego, each other player can change to alter ego as well. It's an okay card for solo play. Probably the most common use, since Cable doesn't have an alter ego ability, the most common use would be to switch to alter ego and heal and then switch back or switch to alter ego and maybe use an alter ego ability on a support and then switch back. Obviously this has much more value in, so in multiplayer than it does in solo play and we may be looking at a very multiplayer focused hero. But in multiplayer every, hero, every player could switch to alter ego and heal and then switch back or switch to alter ego and use their Hero abilities, so like a player or heroes that really rely on their alter ego abilities would love this card. Absolutely love this card. Very, very good card in multiplayer. 
and solo, it's got value. I wouldn't say it's anything special. Mind scan, two cost event. Remove three threat from a scheme and one additional threat from that scheme for each side scheme in the victory display. In order to get really good value out of this, we'd probably need about three side schemes in the victory display. This would be, this would be an exceptional card if we add three side schemes in the victory display. It does have the psionic trait. It has the superpower trait, which means deft focus is usable here. If you didn't have any side schemes in the victory display, would you ever want to spend two resources to remove three threat? Not really. That's pretty bad. Except in an emergency. That's pretty bad. So you're really going to want to build up those side schemes in the victory display as soon as possible. This would be a fairly weak early game card and a fairly strong late game card. And a card that, get, that, that would get better in multiplayer because in multiplayer you'd have four players who could each have side schemes in their deck. Whereas as in a solo game, you're going to be limited in the amount of side schemes that you can play in your deck, and therefore limited in the amount of side schemes that you can draw effectively. Well, does that make sense? I guess you're not limited in the amount of side schemes that you can draw, but you are limited in the number that you can get in the victory display. break here. Mind scan, two cost event. Hero action, remove three threat from a scheme, remove one additional threat from that scheme for each side scheme in the victory display. Has the psionic and the superpower traits, so deft focus would work on this. Well, for this card to be really good, I'd say we need three side schemes in the victory display and you'd be removing six threat from a scheme for two costs, that'd be very strong. Would you ever want to use this for two cost to remove just three threat? I don't really think so. That's pretty bad, except in an emergency. So you really need to get some side schemes in the victory display as soon as possible in order to make this card good. So kind of on the weaker side in the early game, but gets really strong in the late game is what I would say about mind scan, and I like that you can use deft focus on it. You get three of those, then you have precognition, zero cost event. Look at the top X cards of the encounter deck where X is the number of side schemes in the victory display. You may discard one of those cards, put the rest back in any order. Okay, pretty decent. Now obviously utterly useless before you have any side schemes in the victory display. Would you want to play this card when you have just one side scheme in the victory display? Or would you want to use this to pay for something else? I think probably you'd need about two. Two cards in the or two side schemes in the victory display, and you'd want to start playing this. And you could get rid of some nasty encounter cards. And if you had three, it gets pretty strong. Similar to Mind Scan. Two or three is when is the sweet spot for when you'll want to start playing this, and so seems that the task for Cable is to get two side schemes in the victory display as soon as possible. You start with one on the table, that, which is good, and you can play with all of the side schemes in your deck. It's likely that more side schemes will be, well we've seen in the previews, that more side schemes will be added as we move through this hero cycle, so Cable will reach his full power at that point. Now, pre Precognition is a nice card, nothing exceptional, and it doesn't provide the resource generation or card draw that we're looking for. Telekinetic Blast, three cost event, deal six damage to an enemy, deal one additional damage to that enemy for each side scheme in the victory display. So this has the potential to provide the burst damage that we're looking for if you can get five side schemes in the victory display. How easy is that going to be to do? Right now, probably not too easy. Once the full set of cards is out, we'll see. At least the possibility exists that we can get the burst damage that we need, and that's good. Again, it's a superpower, which means depth focus works here. Psionic, not sure if that has any relevance yet, perhaps in the future. But I like the burst damage to potential of this, but again, you'll want at least two in the victory display. I mean, uh, tip, the typical amount would be like a swinging web kick, three for eight. Three for six or three for seven really isn't that good. So two side schemes in the victory display and you're in business seems to be the general theme 
for cable. Two telekinetic blasts, we get Technovirus Purge. A zero cost player side scheme, characters other than cable cannot remove threat from Technovirus Purge. It has five threat on it, and when it's in the victory display, Nathan Summers and Cable gain the psionic trait, and Cable gets plus one Thor, plus one attack, and plus one defense. So if you chose, you could have this... Oh, sorry, it looks goofy on the screen there. One sec. There we go. Got that straightened out. So if we chose, we could start with this side quest or side scheme on the table and then get Cable the psionic trait right away, and that means we could play the psionic events. Eh, I don't know if I'd do that. Plus one, plus one, plus one is nice, though. Definitely a card that you're not going to use for resources. You'll play this when it comes out. Get that threat removed, get Cable upgraded. It's a pretty nice upgrade. Doesn't cost anything, zero cost to play this card. Gray Malkin, two cost support. After a side scheme is defeated, ready Gray Malkin. Resource, exhaust Gray Malkin, generate a lightning resource. So at least one extra resource per round, and possibly two sometimes. It's good. It's a good uh, resource generator, better than the average resource generator. Professor, so one cost support. It's his alter ego action support. Exhaust Professor to choose to either draw one card or search your deck and discard pile for a player side scheme and add it to your hand. Probably going to want to choose the player side scheme a lot of the time. This gives a use for Body Slide in solo play, at least an additional use. So we'll probably play this more often than we would play the average Alter Ego support because the average Alter Ego support, we really never want to be an Alter Ego in solo play and so most, all, most of the time, Alter Ego supports don't see a lot of play. This one will see a play a little more often because of Body Slide. It's good. As far as Alter Ego supports go, it's good. So far, we haven't really seen what we're looking for, which is the resource generation and card draw. We've seen burst damage potential. As Kanisan, as Kanisan, one cost upgrade. This is a card we didn't see in the preview. Hero response, after you defend against an enemy attack, exhaust as Ghanisan and, and spend a lightning resource, remove threat from a scheme equal to your hero's thwart. So you spend one and then you have the ability to spend one to remove two threat in the future. That's okay. If you could upgrade cable and then spend one to, to remove three threat, that's better. It's okay. Doesn't solve the problems that we're looking to solve in solo play. It's resource generation and card draw or burst damage, but it helps you clear those side schemes. And that's what the kit is focused around so far with three copies of Mind Scan. You only have two copies of the damage card telekinetic blast and then you've got this card to help you remove threat forced amnesia one cost upgrade after a non-permanent side scheme is defeated add forced amnesia and that side scheme to the victory display okay so it helps you get some side schemes in the victory display that come out of the encounter deck that wouldn't normally go there and that's going to be quite good for one cost it's a little expensive but probably worth it given how much Cable needs to get two side schemes into the victory display as soon as possible to reach his full potential. And we have Plasma Rifle, a two cost upgrade which is restricted. Action, exhaust Plasma Rifle and spend a lightning resource. Deal one damage to an enemy for each side scheme in the victory display. To a maximum of four and this attack gains ranged which means it's re immune to retaliate. That's good. Uh, one damage, the one resource for one damage is terrible, the one resource for two damage is, uh, not that great. One for three is acceptable and one for four would be good, so this is really a late game card and not that good in the early game. This looks like a really late game oriented hero and may struggle in the early game. 
Reminds me a little bit of Ironheart, though we haven't seen the resource generation yet. Telekinetic Force Field. Two cost upgrade, hero form only, when a friendly character would take any amount of damage. This card, Telekinetic Force Field, prevent all of that damage. Why does it say hero form only when it's a hero interrupt? Isn't that redundant, or does it mean you can only actually play it in hero form? Probably means you can only play it in hero form. So any amount of damage you can prevent with Telekinetic Force Field. A good defensive card. Again, a superpower. Deft Focus is an auto include in this particular, with this particular hero, I would say. Temporal Leap, two cost upgrade, a tactic when the main scheme would be completed. Remove this card from the game and put a side scheme from the victory display into play. Move four threat from the main scheme to that side scheme. Interesting. So some of the player side schemes have a beneficial effect when you complete them. Yes, you're taking a side scheme out of the victory display, but you can then clear the side scheme again and you can get the benefit of that side scheme again. So this seems like a very interesting card. I like the card. High combo potential. We'll have to see the player side schemes though to fully evaluate it. So in the hero kit we have not seen any we have not seen the resource generation or card draw that we're looking for. We have seen some. It has a, the standard resource generator. But we haven't seen the resource generation or card draw that we're looking for so based on the hero kit alone I'd say we're looking at a pretty typical C tier hero for solo play. However there are player side schemes in each of the four main aspects along with a couple of basic ones that we need to look at. So we'll withhold our final judgment on Cable until we see those. Into the aspect cards we got Caliban. Leadership, three cost ally, one thwart, two attack, three health. After Caliban enters play, discard cards from the top of your deck until an X-Factor, X-Force, or X-Men ally is discarded. Add that ally to your hand. Uh, he's pretty good. Not exceptional, but he's pretty good. I like him. I would probably add him to any deck that's including X, uh, any kind of significant number of X-Factor, X-Force, or X-Men allies. Probably wouldn't if I was including only like one, because you could end up discarding most of your deck to find it, but if I was playing an X-Factor, X-Force, or X-Men ally, yeah, Caliban would be an auto-include. I think he's pretty strong. Phantom X, four cost ally, one thwart, one attack, three health. After Phantom X enters play, search your deck and discard pile for EVA and put it into play. Let's take a look at EVA. Here's EVA, zero cost support. If Phantom X is not in play, discard EVA. Exhaust EVA, remove one threat, deal one damage, or heal one damage from Phantom X. So as long as Phantom X is on the table, you've got this versatile effect that happens every turn. One thwart, one attack. He's pretty weak without EVA. With EVA he would get good um, after five or six turns. I would say. And after like nine or ten turns he's exceptional. That's a long time. That's probably too long. I Well, if you get him out early for a long game, he's good. Otherwise, he's probably a little on the weaker side. His stats are just really low, and his health is really low for a four-cost ally. But if you can get him on the table early, he's pretty good. He's probably a little on the weaker side overall because of his versatility, or because of the versatility of EVA. But I've said many times in the past I don't really like vers or, uh, versatility at the expense of power. And that's the case here as well. Though I do think he's still powerful if you get him on the table early. Sunspot. New copy of Sunspot. A new version. Three cost ally, one thwart, two attack, two health. After you play Sunspot from your hand, choose a player. Deal one damage to the villain and each minion engaged with the chosen player. 
for each lightning resource used to pay for Sunspot. Wow, so if you use three lightning resources to play for Sunspot, you're dealing three damage to the villain and each minion engaged with a chosen player. That's a really strong ally. That's an auto-include in, in pretty much every leadership deck, I would say. Really, really good ally. Whether you're playing X-Force or not, I, w I would include this ally in every leadership deck. That's a top tier ally, for sure. Mission planning, two cost event. Play only if there is a side scheme in the victory display. Until the end of the phase, allies you control do not take consequential damage. So you could get extra attack or an extra thwart out of allies that are out of consequential damage to give. To get full value out of this, you'd probably need a full board of allies. You probably need three allies on the table to take full advantage of this. With just two, I don't really think it would be very good. So hard to set up and get full value out of this card. And I probably wouldn't include it for that reason. Call for backup. The leadership player side scheme, one cost, three threat per player to clear. When defeated, each player may search their deck and discard pile for an ally and put it into play. Okay, now we're talking. Now I said I was looking for resource generation or card draw. I should have included cost reduction in that. Cost reduction is also an acceptable substitute because the thing that we're looking to do is build up for the future and also deal with what the villain is trying to do on that particular turn. And this qualifies. This is really strong. In solo play, one cost to get a single ally into play, and you got to clear three threat per player. In multiplayer, still one cost. It's not one cost per player. You have to clear 12 threat, but then each player can search their deck and discard pile for an ally. That is really, really good. Auto include in every cable deck. This is exactly the kind of card that we're looking for to elevate cable. Really, really strong. So Cable, definitely not a C-tier hero after seeing this. A multiplayer beast. If this was the only player side scheme he had access to, he'd be a multiplayer beast. You could start with this on the table if you want to. And if you started with this on the table, you don't have to pay the cost. This is really, really strong and definitely elevates cable. Lock and load. Player side scheme from aggression. One cost. When defeated, each player may search their deck and discard pile for a weapon upgrade with a cost of three or less and put it into play. That's really strong too. Two threat per player. Now we're looking at two side schemes that have... I mean, they're okay in solo. You definitely play them in solo, but in multiplayer, these cards are... these. These cards are turning player uh, Cable into a multiplayer beast. He's starting to look like a must-have hero for serious multiplayer comps that are trying to take on heroic level stuff. And this, these are really, really good side schemes for multiplayer. And they're pretty good in solo, but really, really good in multiplayer. Okay. Established perimeter, one cost from protection, two threat per player. When defeated, give each identity a tough status card. I wouldn't run this in solo. I don't think that's enough value. In multiplayer, I would, though. It's another side scheme that I think is really good in multiplayer. The others are good enough to run in solo. This one, not really. I don't think it's good enough in solo, but for multiplayer, yes. EVA we have covered already. Uncanny X-Force, two cost support, play under any player's control, max one team card per player. If each of your characters has the X-Force trait, each ally you control gets plus one thwart and takes minus one consequential damage after thwarting a side scheme. Well, synergizes very well with Cable. 
It's a good reason to build an X-Force deck because you could keep your allies on the table for the purposes of thwarting side schemes. You'd probably keep like two of them on the table and then use one for jump blocks or whatever and you just keep thwarting every turn. You could clear those side schemes very quickly and get built up faster for the end game. Seems good. Seems like a card I definitely want to build around. At least try it out. We'll try it out with leadership. We'll try them out with justice. See which works better overall. I like the I like the card. I don't know for sure that that will be the best way to play Cable, but everybody who buys Cable will have it, so I imagine most players will give it a shot. As will I, and we'll see what happens. So we get three of those, and we have two cost upgrade mission leader. Reduce the cost to play mission leader by one if your identity has the soldier trait. After a side scheme is defeated, exhaust mission leader, each player draws a card. Each player? Oh, wow. Uh, this hero is at least S tier for multiplayer. At least. Do we get three of those? Just, no, it's unique, so just one. That's a really, really strong card. It would be good if only you drew one card. Each player drawing a card? I mean, I'll, I'll still play this in solo play, but each player drawing a card? That is unbelievably good. So each player can draw a card. Each player can play a weapon upgrade for free. Each player can play an ally for free. Yeah, this is a, an S-tier hero for multiplayer, at least. And he's looking like he may be S or even S plus in solo as well. This is a really, really good card. And combined with the player side schemes that we've seen, the aggression and leadership ones. Yeah, those are legit. Really, really strong. Each player draws a card after a side scheme is defeated. And it only costs one if you're, I mean, wow. That's just unbelievably good. Deadpool, 3 cost ally, 2 thwart, 2 attack, and 3 health, when Deadpool would be defeated by consequential damage. Heal 3 damage from him, instead add an acceleration token to the main scheme. Uh, it's a forced interrupt, so you can't choose. Might be a an ally that you really want to play in the mid game and not the late game. And he would be defeated. Because if you you can't have him removed from the table and if he adds acceleration tokens too quickly or you. Because you'd probably use him twice after you played him, right? And then there's often cards from the encounter deck that deal a damage to your allies. So you could inadvertently add too many acceleration tokens early. You typically don't want to go over one acceleration token on a, a scheme or it's going to be completed in short order. It depends on the scenario that you're facing. If you're facing something like Ultron where you really want to stay in phase one as long as you can and it has a le very low threat threshold, you might not want Deadpool. There are others where I think you'd be okay. This would require some experimentation to use to see how good he is. It's hard to say. Just ballparking it. He's probably above average. I don't know if he's an auto-include. He might be, though. He might be. We're definitely going to experiment with him and see how it goes. He might be an auto-include. Yeah. Now, it's only when he's defeated by consequential damage. You could, So I said it was hard to remove him from the table. I take that back. You can have him defend a boss attack and he'll die just fine. So I think he's actually, I think he's really strong. I'm definitely going to include him in decks and try him out. Though, I reserve the right to be wrong about this one. <laughs> it's possible that he's not that good, but I think adding one acceleration token to the main scheme isn't really going to hurt you. So you could easily get like eight attack and then defend a boss attack and that would be exceptional. Though the acceleration token isn't going anywhere. But I think this ally is good. Looking forward to trying him.
Deathlock, 4 cost, 2 thwart, 2 attack, he's got the X-Force trait, 3 health. After Deathlock enters play, choose an upgrade in any player's discard pile with a cost of 1 or less that can be attached to Deathlock. Attach that upgrade to Deathlock only from the discard pile. Well, you'd have to get probably like 4 in value from that upgrade for this to be any good. Not easy to set up. Not easy to set up. If he wasn't Dex Force, I probably wouldn't consider playing him. If we want to play Uncanny, X Force will be limited in the allies that we can play. Will that make Deathlock a card we want to look at? Uh, maybe. I don't think he's that good. You have to include a, an upgrade. I don't think the upgrades are that good generally. So you have to include a card that I don't think is that good to make this card good. And you have to get that card. The upgrade into the discard pile first. Otherwise, he's not good. If he all he is is a 2-2 two, two with 3 health for 4 cost, that's bad. So, And you don't want to hold cards in your hand pretty much ever. So if you draw this card before you've drawn your upgrade, and you probably don't want to play a lot of upgrades, because they're not generally very good. So I don't think so with Deathlock. Hard to set up. Frenemies. One cost event. Team up Cable and Deadpool. Deadpool's not coming out for a while. Deal one damage each to Cable and Deadpool. Remove three threat from a scheme and three threat from a different scheme. Well, Deadpool will like having damage done to him. Or at least doesn't hurt him as much. Cable won't. Uh, two cost for six threat removal is very good. Do we care about the damage? Maybe a little. It's a pretty good team up. If you're playing Cable and Deadpool, I'd play this card. Help clear some of those side schemes quicker. Build support. Basic side scheme, one cost. When defeated, each player may search their deck and discard pile for a support with a cost of three or less and put it into play. Too bad it's three or less. Avengers Mansion would be nice. So we play Build Support. We could use it as our introductory one. Three threat per player, and then each player could grab like a Helicarrier or a Quinn Carrier or what's the X Men one? Those are all three cost or less. It's another side scheme that seems absolutely amazing in solo in uh, multiplayer. Still pretty good in solo play, but absolutely amazing in multiplayer. Cable looks like a slam dunk S tier hero, at least, if not S plus, probably S plus in multiplayer. He's really, really good with these side schemes that let every player get set up faster. I mean, he may be the best hero in the game for multiplayer. He may even top heroes like Spider Ham or Doctor Strange. Really, really powerful multiplayer hero. Power of the Mind. Double the number of resources this card generates while paying for a psionic card. I think almost all of his cards are psionic. Definitely include this in the cable deck. Scimitar. Two cost upgrade after you play another psionic card. Exhaust Scimitar. Deal two damage to an enemy. Looks like a card I want to include in Cable. If we could use it three times, it's good, and I think we will be able to use it three times. It is an attack, so it will proc retaliate, but I still think it's very good. And Cable is getting all the tools. It's really, really good cards. His hero kit was actually kind of lackluster, but the aspect and basic cards that come with him are just exceptional. They're really, really strong. Sidearm, one cost upgrade, attached to an ally, max one per ally. Attached ally gets plus one attack and its attack gains ranged. Probably with an eye on giving Deathlock something to use if you haven't got other cards from other expansions or hero packs. Uh, like most ally upgrades, I don't think this one is that good. Not enough value for its cost. So you'll typically get like two attacks per ally before they take a, a uh, 
an attack from the boss and two damage for one cost isn't very good. Three copies of that. And then we're into the obligation stuff. So the, the player cards, Cable looks like S or S plus to me for multiplayer. And potentially for solo, he may be very strong there as well. My guess is he won't be S plus. I'd give a range of like B plus to S somewhere in there is where Cable's going to land for solo play. But I wouldn't be that surprised if he goes higher to just straight up S or even S plus. Seems really, really strong. We'll probably start out with that build support card and get out a resource generator right away in solo. That's the way I would play it, I think. But we'll test them out. So let's move on and check out Domino. Domino's alter ego is Nina Thurman. Three recovery, hand size six, hit points nine. She's a little on the fragile side. Once again, we're looking for resource generation slash card draw and burst damage. Cable has that. For solo, he has it in spades and multiplayer. I mean, wow. At least that's how it appears to me. So let's take a look at Domino. Her action, choose a card in your hand, swap that card with the top card of your discard pile once per round. She has 1, 2, 3 in stats. The posse trait, the X-Force trait, when counting resources on cards discarded from the top of your deck, count each printed wild icon twice. Choose a card in your hand, swap that card with the top card of your deck once per round. Is that the same as the alter ego ability? Top card of your discard pile, okay. So this allows you to control what cards come off of your deck so you can get those double wild resources. Hand size 5. Alter Ego Ally is Diamondback. 2 cost ally, 1 thwart, 1 attack, 2 health. Exhaust Diamondback, deal 1 damage to her and discard the top card of your deck. Deal 1 damage to each enemy for each resource icon discarded this way. to each enemy, so you'd need for there to be like two enemies on the table. If you had two enemies on the table, she's quite good, and you discarded a wild resource. Two enemies on the table and you discarded a wild resource, she's quite good. Less than that, I don't think she's very good. So you need to do some setup to make her work need to do some setup with Domino's hero power. But not too difficult to do. And then she'll be quite good. And if you have more than two enemies, then she's really exceptional. More than two enemies and you grab a wild resource, then she's really exceptional. Pretty cool card. I like it. Outlaw. So she's got another hero-specific ally. Three cost ally with one thwart, one attack. And toughness. And when Outlaw attacks, discard the top card of your deck, and Outlaw gets plus one attack for each resource icon discarded this way. It's an exceptional ally. She's really, really strong with that toughness and three cost. Yeah, I like it. Very strong allies for Domino. Good workout. Two cost event. Deal four damage to an enemy and discard the top card of your deck for each resource icon discarded this way. Deal one additional damage to that enemy. So it would be like a two for six a lot of the time. It's okay. Uh, these small amount events that are efficient but don't generate the burst damage we're looking for, they do well in certain scenarios but they don't do well against Retaliate. And in solo that's something we're really looking for is the ability to do well against Retaliate. If a hero can't do well against Retaliate there's no way we can rank them in the top tiers because they, they simply Especially with low health, they'll just die against Retaliate heroes, so they can't be ranked in the top tier if they're limited in the content that they can do for solo. At least they can't be ranked in the top tier for, for solo play if they're limited in that way. Get two copies of a good workout. Luck be a lady, one cost event. Hero action, discard the top card of your deck and count the resources on it. For each resource counted this way, if it is a lightning resource, heal 2 damage. 
Science, remove two threat. Strength, deal three damage to an enemy. Wild, choose one of the above. You really need two of those for this card to be good. So you need like two wild resources or two lightning or two whatever. If you don't have that, I don't think this card is very good. Fortunately with Domino, you can manipulate it, the deck so that you do get the resources you want on top. You'll need to do that. Seems like you need to do it for all of Domino's cards to be good. Does that mean you can only play one good card per round? It might, and so far we haven't seen the tools that we're looking for. But we didn't see those tools in Cable's Hero kit either, but they came later in the Aspect or Basic cards, so let's hold off judgment until we see everything. Right place, right time, two cost event. Remove three threat from a scheme and discard the top card of your deck. For each resource icon discarded, remove one additional threat. So if you got two for five, it's all right. It's not bad. Nothing exceptional, but definitely not bad. If you get two for four, eh, it's okay. It is a superpower, so you could use Death Focus. Get two copies of that. Then we got Jackpot, a resource with three resource icons, so this would be very good with Luck Be a Lady. After this card is discarded, shuffle it back into your deck. That's good. Okay, same. it's a good resource generator and it's specifically suited for Domino's cards. Uh, still not really seeing any resource generation or card draw though. And definitely not seeing purse damage or damage that's immune to retaliate, like Cable had. Pip the Pug, one cost support, exhaust Pip the Pug, put one domino or posse card from your discard pile on top of your deck. Okay, helps you set up her combos a bit. Probably not going to get played much in solo. Alter Ego card needs to be really exceptional before we play it, and it is a wild resource. It's probably what we're going to use it for most of the time with domino. The Painted Lady, one cost support. After you discard a card from the top of your deck, attach that face down here. Alter Ego action, exhaust the Painted Lady, add one attached card here to your hand. So you can essentially draw three cards. That's strong enough that we probably will want to switch to Alter Ego. It's just so hard to find opportunities to do that when you're playing in solo. And if you have to do it in order to take advantage of, of Domino's kit, that's pretty bad for solo play. Domino's Pistol, two cost upgrade, exhaust Domino's Pistol, choose an enemy and discard the top card of your deck. Deal one damage to that enemy for each resource icon discarded this way that this attack gains ranged. You'd need to do that for a total of six damage before this card would be any good. And With all of these cards discarded from your deck, it, it's starting to look like you're gonna generate encounter cards faster than other heroes will. You get two of those pistols, they are restricted. Lucky and good, one cost upgrade. Defense when a boost card is turned face up during an attack against you. Exhaust lucky and good. Cancel that card's boost icons and boost ability. Give the attacking enemy another boost card for this attack. Oh, why couldn't they have just left out that last sentence? It would be so good. Should be a, a good defensive hero with that card. Uh, well, you can get rid of some nasty boost abilities that bring attachments into play or enemies into play. And maybe you end up with something better, maybe you don't. It's thematic. Will it be good? There's no way to know. Depends on the encounter deck. On average, probably you'll improve your position if you use it wisely, but sometimes you won't. Sometimes you'll get greedy and end up in a worse position. Lucky Break, zero cost upgrade when you reveal an encounter card, discard Lucky Break, cancel the effects of that card and discard it, reveal another card from the encounter deck. Ah, uh, similar theme, as I have similar things to say about this one as Lucky and Good. This one's one time use was Lucky and Good. No, you can use that repeatedly. So I like that one better. Lucky break, a one-time use. Eh, we'll see. Probability field, two cost upgrade. When you use a basic power, discard the top card of your deck. You get plus one to that power for this use. 
for each resource icon. So you could use that for defense or offense. Well, anything really, but defense in particular. It seems like Domino might be more defensive oriented. Okay, and that's her hero kit. Well, the card draw that we saw relies on Alter Ego in order to use it. And we don't see any kind of burst damage or damage that gets around retaliate. So I'd say this, this hero's ceiling is probably B or B+, plus, with C not being unlikely and D being possible. She looks fun and unique, but not that strong overall for solo play. Let's check out the aspect cards. It's going to be Justice, four cost ally. Feral is the name of this ally. Four cost, two thwart, two attack. After Feral thwarts, discard the top card of your deck. For each resource icon discarded, deal one damage. You'd probably need to get like two resource icons each time. So you'd need to use this in combination with Domino. You could do that. If he did that, it's pretty decent. For a four cost ally though, pretty decent doesn't typically cover it for high difficulty solo. I usually run two cost allies. But I'll run a four cost ally if it's truly exceptional, like a, a Wolverine from Aggression. But this one, probably not. Would you run it in an X-Force deck? Maybe. We'll see. It's possible. Would you be running a Justice X-Force deck, though? I don't know. Probably not. So this ally probably doesn't see too much play. Wolfsbane. Three cost ally. Two thwart. One attack. Three health. After Wolfsbane thwarts, name a card type, then discard the top card of your deck. If that card is of the named type, you may add it to your hand. Oh, so with Domino, you can basically draw cards with this. This ally I really do like with Domino. This ally is really, really good with Domino. Not with Domino. Uh, it's okay. Even not with Domino, if you manage to guess right one time, and you'll know the composition of your deck, so the likelihood will probably be like, I don't know, one in three or something. It's okay outside of the Domino deck, but with Domino I think this is a really good card, and an auto-include if you're playing Justice. Even the odds, two cost event, requirement, lightning resource. Remove one threat per player from each side scheme. Deal one damage to the villain for each side scheme defeated this way. Uh, I think you'd need to get six in total value to make this good. In solo, you would get... So this would only be good in solo if you, like, remove threat from two different side schemes and... Well, three different side schemes and defeated three of them. This would be good. <laughs> really, really unlikely. Uh... So this is a multiplayer card, not a solo card. If you were in multiplayer and you were removing fourth threat for, from each side scheme, yeah, now we're talking. So for multiplayer, yes. For solo, no. Not good. Team Investigation costs two per player. Alliance, the players can pay this card's cost as a group. Remove three threat per player from a side scheme. Uh, two for three is pretty expensive. I don't think this is very good. It clearly, the reason why it's not very good is because the alliance gives it versatility, the alliance trait. But uh, I don't care for versatility at the expense of power, so I don't think this one's very good, and I probably wouldn't play it whether I'm playing solo or multiplayer. But especially not in solo. Two for three just doesn't cut it. So we got another side scheme. Take out the guards. 
costs zero, and when defeated, each player may discard one non-elite minion from play. Fourth threat, uh, auto include in cable. I think it probably gets included in just a regular old justice deck. So far, all the side schemes I've seen, like the leadership one would get included in a leadership deck. The basic one would get included in a, any deck, really, I think. That card's going to be like a must include in almost every game. The aggression one gets included in aggression decks, and the justice one I think gets included in justice decks. These are all really, really good. With the exception of the protection one for solo play, which I don't think is that good for solo. Overwatch we have seen before. Atlas Bear, so we're into the basic cards. Three cost ally with one thwart, one attack, three health. It's a posse card. Exhaust Atlas Bear, look at the top card of a player deck. If that card is an, is an event, you may deal one damage to Atlas Bear to add that card to its owner's hand. And, okay, so if it's not an event, you do nothing, so he just stays on the board until he draws you two cards, and then he takes a boss attack. It's good. It's nothing exceptional, but he is good. Is he an auto-include? No. But he's good. If you have a way to heal him, you could go on drawing cards for a while. It would be an efficient use of healing, but he's good. Nothing exceptional, but he's he's pretty good. White Fox, another posse card. Three cost ally, one thwart, one attack, three health. After White Fox is discarded from the top of your deck, put her into play under your control. Okay, auto include in a domino deck. Outside of a domino deck, uh, not very good at all. Might as well be a domino specific card. The posse. Okay, I was wondering if there was going to be posse synergy. Two cost event, play only if you control at least three characters with the posse trait. Heal one damage from each posse character and ready them. Um, it seems a little weak as far as synergy cards go. It's hard to set up. At least it's a wild resource if you can't set it up. Hard to set up and relatively low payoff for the setup. Would I include this in a domino deck? Probably, probably not. One per deck, probably not. I don't think it's that good. I'd be looking for more like heal two damage from each posse character. Then I would include this. Then we have superpower training. One cost side scheme. When defeated, each player may search their deck and discard pile for an identity specific upgrade and put it into play. This is incredibly good. There are heroes like Ant-Man that really rely on their upgrades. Ant-Man's helmet, he really, really needs that. So if you were playing Cable with Ant-Man on the table, you could run this to start the game. And when you clear it, every player gets to grab, like the Star-Lord player could grab Star-Lord's helmet, which is a super important card. Ant-Man could grab Ant-Man's helmet. This is just another really, really strong side scheme. Makes Cable even better. I mean, wow, is Cable a beast in multiplayer. I think it'd be hard to uh, understate that. He just seems incredible to me in multiplayer. I mean, it's possible I'm wrong. It's possible I'm underestimating the burden that clearing that threat will bring. So you've got to clear 12 threat, three times four players to clear this side scheme. It's possible I'm underestimating how much of a burden that is, but I don't think so. I think Cable looks really, really strong in multiplayer and decent in solo. I mean, better than decent. I'm expecting big things from him. Digging deep. Resource card after this card is discarded from the top of your deck, added to your hand. Must include in Domino. Might as well be hero specific because I don't think you ever include it outside of Domino deck. Get three of those. Sharpshooter, two cost upgrade. 
When you make a ranged attack, discard the top card of your deck. This attack deals one additional damage for each resource icon discarded this way. That's very niche. Now you need to make about six extra damage for this to be good. You'd need to be making a lot of ranged attacks, basically. How does Domino make ranged attacks? Well, she's got her pistols that can allow her to do that. So if you got your pistols out and this upgrade, you can get extra damage. Probably we'll include this with Domino and see how it works at least. I don't think it's anything exceptional, but the ranged attacks at least let you avoid the retaliate. So she does have the ability to avoid retaliate, it's just her resource generation requires you to flip to Alter Ego and doesn't come built into the kit. Most likely the B ceiling for this hero is correct. B tier is her ceiling. But we'll certainly test her out. And as always, I would be happy to be proven wrong. Okay, and then we also have Hope Summers. Four cost ally with two thwart, two attack, and three health. Hope gains each trait on your identity. After you play Hope Summers from your hand, search your deck for a superpower card and add it to your hand. Not really strong enough for a four cost ally, I would say. The gains each trade on your identity could be relevant in some cases, but four damage and then a chump block and then drawing one card for four cost is not quite enough, I would say. So probably won't play this ally too much. So that's the player cards from Next Evolution. And my guess is Cable, S or S plus for multiplayer. A or S for solo, most likely. And then Domino, like C or B for either solo or multiplayer. That's my guess, but we will certainly play them and see what they can do. And as always, I'll be hoping that the heroes do better than I expect them to do. So, thank you for watching.